An obese Icelandic man named Fusi, despite being over 40 years old, still lives with his mother. His monotonous life begins with a breakfast of cocoa cereal and milk. When he leaves the house, he does hard work including handling luggage for an airline as one of the ground staff at the local airport, never having had a day off in his life. Most of his spare time is occupied by his favorite hobby, reenacting historical battles with small figurines on his desk and assembling them with custom scenes made of wood and clay. To make them look more real, he paints each figure by hand. One day, after visiting a toy model shop, he meets a young girl, Hera, who has just moved into a new apartment with her recently divorced father. She curiously asks whose toy the model is, unaware that it's for his pleasure. As he opens the door to the apartment, he's surprised to see his mother is clapping with her lover, Ralph, so he decides to play with his truck in the snow outside, and Hera sees him. Later in the evening, while Fusi's mother is doing a perm for a friend, Fusi goes out to meet with his closest friend Marur for their weekly tabletop game night. His friend's son wants to join in, but he's forbidden because it's a game for adults. After a while, the two friends talk about Fusi's mother and hypnotherapy for repressed bad memories while smoking. Fusi comes home and inadvertently hears a minor quarrel between Ralph and his mother. The next day, Ralph talks to him at breakfast, worried that he spends too much time on war miniatures instead of dealing with the real battles of life. He suggests finding a partner online because chatting with others in chat rooms is convenient. Fusi thinks about this while at work. In his lonely segment, his colleagues talk behind his back, mocking his appearance. Later, they ridicule and accuse him of never clapping with a woman. Even though Fusi remains silent, trying not to engage with them, he gets hit in the back with earmuffs before leaving the canteen. Later in the evening, he goes to an Asian restaurant, having his weekly dinner at a Thai restaurant. Despite feeling upset seeing himself eating alone once again. Afterwards, he sits in the car, calls up a DJ friend, and requests a heavy metal song to be played on the radio as he views the Riverside night scene. On his 42nd birthday, Ralph and his mother invite him to a Western-themed dance class, gifting him a cowboy hat which surprises him. They hope to see him engaging in other activities rather than staying home during his free time. They also hope this could encourage him to meet others as he's an introverted person. Later, inside the airport terminal office, Fusi's boss confronts him about the bullying he received a few days ago, but he denies it, asserting it won't jeopardize the careers of his colleagues. When he comes home, he sees a sad Hera waiting by the stairs for her father, as she's locked out of the apartment. He brings her to his home, offers her a slice of birthday cake and a cup of milk. Later, Hera wanders around his toy box, but she gets disappointed when she realizes the toys are not meant for girls. Then he shows her his tabletop display, explaining that he's trying to reenact a World War II battle in Egypt called the Battle of El Alamein, which makes the little girl happy. Later, her father comes to pick her up, albeit uncomfortable seeing her with Fuzi. The night of the dance class arrives, and he dresses more decently. However, when he arrives at the dance studio, he hesitates to step onto the dance floor, mainly because he sees elderly people attending the class. Back in the car, he calls up his DJ friend again, requesting another heavy metal song to be played as the snow starts to fall outside. Then, he sees a woman appearing, exiting the studio, asking for help to drive her home, to which he agrees. While enjoying the ride, she befriends him after making him promise that he's not a pervert. She appreciates his help and agrees to be his dance partner so he won't feel nervous during the class. Then, he safely drops her home, uncertain about his emotions. The next morning, Fusi is playing a game with Marur when his mother and Ralph ask about the dance. They are satisfied with his response. In the locker room at his workplace, the bullying colleagues harass him, dragging him into the bathroom for a wash because he appears dirty. Despite the cruel prank, his passive nature prevents him from retaliating. Later, Hera asks Fusi to play with her dolls. In her apartment, she reveals that her father thinks he's weird, which disappoints him greatly. But she says she doesn't think so, comforting him. Later in the evening, he goes to his dance class, which provides an opportunity, as Chauvin will be there. Surprisingly, he can follow the steps well even when the coach approaches him to correct his movements. After the class, he invites Chauvin to his favorite Asian restaurant. He confesses that he eats there every week and recommends a Thai set meal. The restaurant owner is delighted to see him on a date and offers them free side dishes, 
which surprises Fuzi. Later, the two linger by the river, where Fuzi asks her about her favorite song, hoping to have his DJ friend play it on the radio to cheer her up. When she mentions Islands in the Stream by Dolly Parton, he's surprised by her love for country music. Over the phone, his DJ friend initially thinks he's being pranked, but when Fuzi reveals it's for a woman, he gives in. As the song plays, she grows more fond of him. She later proposes that he stay at her place for a while, but he refuses. However, after a thought, he parks the truck, rings the doorbell, and proposes he'd like to come in for a glass of milk. They talk about their lives, Chauvin brings up her love for gardening since working at a flower shop, and her passion for traveling. Later, Fuzi drives home smiling while thinking about Chauvin. Another day arrives, Fuzi shows off his skill of preparing cream pudding for his mother's friends. Later at work, a brutish colleague named Elfer asks him to repair a car engine while apologizing for the terrible pranks, attempting to make up for his wrongdoing. He invites him to a weekend gathering, promising to treat him as a guest of honor and hopes he won't be blamed for the incident in the bathroom. Later in Marur's garage, his friends offer him dating advice, and he's excited because he's finally out of a romantic rut. At home, Fusi continues to listen to Dolly Parton's songs, enjoying them because of Chauvin. Then he convinces himself to book a trip to a sunny part of the world at a travel agency. After that, he tries to visit Chauvin at the flower shop, but the owner says she has never worked there. He goes to her house and discovers she's been working as a garbage collector. She shows up at the doorstep and rudely pushes him away. But Fuzi insists on speaking, even though it unsettles her. He gives her an Egyptian travel guide, encouraging her to go on the trip with him. Despite being pleased with the idea of going abroad, she clarifies that she and Fuzi should remain friends. Then he promises to alter the booking so they have separate sleeping arrangements. Soon after, Fusi is playing a paintball game with Elfer and his friends. Then they drink a lot at his place. A dancing girl comes and dances seductively in front of the men, which makes Fusi very uncomfortable. Elfer later pays her an extra fee to get intimate with him, but Fusi declines. This upsets Elfer so much that he and his buddies drag him into the bedroom. Fusi has had enough and retaliates against the bullies before leaving. After calling in sick, he gets in his car to leave but sees Hera, who is bored, so he offers to take her with him. Although he buys the little girl ice cream, she remains unhappy to the scenery and insists on going home. Upon arrival, her father angrily questions Fuzi about taking his daughter, accusing him of being a pervert. Despite his sincere apology, the police intervene and take him to the station for a statement. Then he explains to the detective that it's all a misunderstanding and assures him that the girl simply enjoys playing with him and is interested in his desktop or games. Returning to dance class in the evening, he's disappointed that Chauvin hasn't shown up. Later, he drives to her house, seeing that she's been inside home all day. The following afternoon, when Hera's friend wants to play with his toy truck in the yard, he goes over to try it. This greatly displeases his mother and he's quickly called back home. Hera watches Fuzi as she's prohibited from approaching him. As time passes, he grows increasingly concerned for Chauvin's health. One night, he barges into her house, seeing that all the lights are off except for the TV. Although her clothes are on the bed, she locks herself in the broom closet all night to escape her depression. Fuzi decides to sleep there to take care of her. He even makes breakfast, feeds the cat, and cleans the whole house. In the morning, he goes to work, asking his boss for a few days off. Surprisingly, he doesn't hesitate because Fuzi has already earned many paid vacation. He returns to Chauvin's house, makes a delicious pan-fried fish to lure her out. Then, she confides her despair at being unable to return to work, admitting she might have been fired already. To solve her problem, Fuzi goes to the landfill, voluntarily proposing to replace Chauvin so the company can continue to pay her. Returning to her home with flowers, he opens the closet and Chauvin is crying. He embraces her, assuring her everything will be okay. After giving her a bath and feeding her, he tucks her into bed for a good night's sleep. The next day at the waste disposal plant, Chauvin's co-workers notice his work is good, so they invite him to the local bar for a drink. While watching the football game, the workers are friendly to him, which relieves him, unlike his colleagues at the airport. When he gets home, Fuzi finds his mother crying in bed heartbroken that Ralph has left her as they were starting to take their relationship seriously. He cooks her a fried fish dinner, which surprises her. 
She thinks he is taking Chauvin too seriously, asking him if he would leave her one day. But he insists that he and that woman are just friends. The next morning, Fuzi returns to Chauvin's home, but sees her in high spirits, painting the walls at home and listening to her favorite songs. They both have dinner. Later, they stop near an abandoned shop, which used to be a candy store. She hopes to turn it into her new business one day. Some time passes, Fusi successfully completes the remaining shifts at the waste disposal plant of Chauvin. The co-workers give him a party gift and celebrate with drinks. When he gets home later, Chauvin jumps into his arms and kisses him. They clap that night. The next morning, Fusi wakes up next to Chauvin, dumbfounded, realizing his true feelings for her. After an exciting dance class, they go to a sushi restaurant. Chauvin asks about a trip to Egypt, hoping they could go together. Then she suggests he move in with her, which makes him happy. However, he will have to wait for his mother's permission. She becomes upset and storms out of the restaurant. Fuzi follows her, apologizes for being caught off guard by her proposal. He agrees to move in, as they solidify their relationship. He gets home, cuts open the display table on the desk. Much to his mother's dismay, she knows that after 42 years, he will leave her. The next day, Fusi prepares to move out, leaving a box of toys for Hera's father. The divorced man apologizes for his actions and his unfair judgment. Fusi accepts this. Later, with Moroer's help, after Chauvin takes the remaining moving boxes, she talks to him anxiously. Admitting she has changed her mind, she's not ready for him to move in immediately. She deeply apologizes for leaving him, mainly due to her depression. As Moroer puts his things back into the truck, he watches him with sadness. He feels confused and disheartened about what has happened, returning to his mother's apartment, sitting in the dark pondering what went wrong. On the second cold morning, he returns to his everyday life and monotonous work routine. As he drives, he gazes at the passengers on the plane runway, thinking about going with them one day. Then he buys the lease of the abandoned shop and renovates it with Marur. Later in the evening, after some last-minute arrangements, he leaves a note in Chauvin's mailbox with a key to the newly renovated shop, hoping that she would be interested in transforming it into the flower shop of her dreams. The next morning at the airport, Fusi prepares to board a plane to Egypt, taking one last look at the airport where he once worked. As the plane takes off, he looks out the window, sighs with relief, and smiles slightly. He feels proud that for the first time, he has done something better with his own life and also changed the lives of others. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and you can also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.